Owning and convincing other people to own a sports car or even just any scale of fun car is something I'm extremely passionate about. Whenever anybody is searching for their next vehicle, I'm completely flabbergasted by the amount of people who end up settling for boring cars. It's super weird. So I always ask them, why the hell are you choosing a slow car that simulates that same feeling of standing in line at the friggin' DMV except when you're driving? That sounds terrible and every single time it comes back to reliability. You know what? That's a pretty valid point. It makes a lot of sense, especially when you put dollars of ownership of cars on paper. But there's this crazy misconception out there that says fun cars can't be reliable cars, and that is just not the truth. So go grab yourself your favorite snack, sit back and relax, because today I'm gonna blow your mind holes wide open, and I'm gonna show you guys my secret list of reliable cars that are still fun to drive. But before we get into the nitty gritty of all of that, let me give you guys the real quick lowdown on how to save some time and some money on wheels and tires. If you head over to fitmentindustries.com and put together a wheel and tire package, not only are we gonna knock some doll hairs off that order and save you guys some cash, but we're also gonna mount, balance, and ship these bad boys to your door literally for free. No more hassling the guy at the tire shop counter to stretch your 215s on your friggin' 11 wides. No more paying a low profile tire fee on tires that aren't even low profile. And they're just gonna show up ready to go and bolt on. So quit messing around and get your wheels and tires packaged together. There's a link in the description or if you just want, you know, a free set of wheels, we're actually doing a giveaway with Kanze right now. All you gotta do to get entered is pick up one of our brand new pieces of giveaway apparel. We got this sick black t-shirt right here. We got a white one, we got a blue one with a little bit different designs and we have this sick Kanze lanyard with fish and wheels on it. It's pretty sweet. And every $5 that you spend on this giveaway apparel gets you entered to win and you help support a great cause in the process as we're giving a portion of the proceeds to Feeding America, which is pretty dang cool. Don't forget to subscribe so we can keep making fun content. Follow me on Instagram at seanbeat.fi and uh, well, I think that's it, so let's get into the video. Wow, first stop is a bit hit or miss for me personally. On one hand, the Nissan 370Z made basically the same exact car from 2009 until 2020 with no major revisions or power bumps outside of random expensive special editions. On the other hand, the formula works. Recycling a bunch of parts that were already made for other models is a play straight from the domestic muscle car playbook. And it keeps things reliable and cheap to maintain. The 332 horsepower might sound kind of slow by today's standards, but I promise you it's plenty of power to get this car to do just about anything that you ask it to do. And it will hold its own during a well, let's call it an acceleration comparison test on the street with a lot of modern cars. It is naturally aspirated, so it is a little difficult to make real power without adding boost, but it's that natural aspiration that keeps it naturally reliable. The Nissan 370Z is a really hard one to argue against for a buyer who wants the two-seater JDM sports car experience without having to own two cars in case one of them breaks down. And then making the jump all the way across the pond from Japan to good old Elizabeth, South Australia, the Pontiac Holden Vauxhall Monaro GTO thing was introduced to the US in 2003 for the 2004 model year, starting its first year in the US with a 350 horsepower 5.7 liter LS1 straight from the Corvette in a well-sized four-seater two-door car that kind of replaced the then dead Camaro which we always wanted, except this one was kind of ugly. I personally think these cars look fantastic, but I suppose you could say I'm biased because I like weird understated designs. Anyway, even though these cars work quick as hell, they handled really, really good compared to their competition in its price bracket, and it came with a manual transmission if you wanted one, the new GTO was a complete and utter flop. I mean, come on GM, what were you thinking putting a single exit exhaust on a car like this? Needless to say, the next model year 2005 got some pretty solid improvements in the looks department. Not only was the car updated with these aggressive double hood scoops, but it actually got that dual exhaust that everybody was looking for. And they even upped the displacement a little bit with a six liter LS2 V8 that produced a Z06 horsepower level of 400. This was a ton of horsepower for the time. And unlike the G8 that came after it, the GTO had a true LS engine. That means no DOD issues, no lifter ticks, just raw LS performance with that classic GM reliability. And because the looks are a bit understated, a little ugly as own people, the prices of these things are actually extremely reasonable. How about instead of trading fun for reliability, you trade looks for performance by buying a nice and comfortable modern muscle car like 
the GTO. Moving again in almost a complete opposite direction, Mercedes-Benz, a company also known for their expensive prices and unreliable gremlins, surely one of those won't make the list. Will they? Well, as a matter of fact, they freaking do make the list. I'd like to introduce you to the R129 SL class, more specifically the 500 trim, with the five liter M113 V8, because it's the absolute sweet spot between the slow six cylinder and the bonkers six liter V12. The M113 five liter is, well, it's kind of a parts bin special of the Mercedes brand at the time. The M113 50 was in everything. When I say everything, I mean it. These things were in sedans, coupes, SUVs, friggin' G-Wagons, and even their flagship sports car, the SL. Needless to say, the engineers had a really nice budget to work with to develop one of the best engines to come out of the brand from this era. Now, they did make these things from 89 to friggin' 2001, and the one you really want is kind of that late model year, like we're talking 99 to 01. This is where they sort of made their final revisions and really cleaned up any issues for the cars developed over the years. With 300 horsepower and a curb weight topping two tons, this car isn't gonna perform like a Corvette, but it's gonna get you pretty damn close for the same amount of money, and it's gonna have that much more class and be that much more comfortable on a daily basis without sacrificing reliability. These are awesome cars, and if you're looking for that top-down sports car experience, this one's gonna be really hard to beat. It's a prestigious brand with a ton of history and lots of money spent on the development. Plus, this thing is a friggin' 90s pop culture icon. I mean, come on. Tell me that you wouldn't vibe in this thing with the top down and blasting notorious B.I.G. CDs. Don't count these off because of the badge. They're really great cars. A really great option for the price conscious consumer looking for a fun car that also wants something newer. The BRZ FRS GT86 cars are a great entry level way to experience fun through a lightweight chassis. Reducing weight can be just as effective for fun having as adding power without the added stress on the drivetrain. I mean, it's the classic form the right you, know, you got lightweight car uh, economy car engine just like the miata the lotus elise and all the way back to the acas these cars are sub 2800 pounds with 200 horsepower you or i can make all the slow car jokes that you want but at the end of the day it's not about going fast it's about having a fun journey without having to be limited to a, like the friggin miata you know so don't let some haters convince you not to get one because they're slow because they're great they're reliable and affordable options to start your sport oriented car journey and they're really good at a lot of motorsport stuff now it would be really really hard for me to get through this list without talking about the ford mustang now i know i get it everyone and their mom has a friggin mustang and they have this weird stigma for crashing into crowds and they can garner some negative attention from police. But these cars are popular for a reason, especially the 2011 to present cars with that five liter Coyote V8. The Coyote Mustang makes a minimum of 412 horsepower, has a very stout bottom end, variable valve timing, and a huge aftermarket support. They can take back to back to back beatings without skipping, well, a beat. Because at the end of the day, the Coyote and the Mustang is very similar to the one in the F-150. You know, the best selling truck in America, it tows a bunch of heavy stuff, does a bunch of work, and hauls around vehicles with twice the Mustang's weight. Half the weight equals half the stress, right? Either way, the Coyote Mustangs have proven to be pretty damn stout, and the 400 horsepower will deliver smile after smile without compromising anything that would leave you stranded or stuck with expensive repairs. Sticking with another domestic sports car, the Chevrolet Corvette is, for lack of better analogy, a big Miata with an aluminum truck engine. Again, with the classic formula reference, but there seems to be a trend here, right? Big, reliable work engine plus stuff it into a small chassis equals reliable, fun car. I mean, it's pretty much is that simple. And with the C5 Corvette, you can get exactly that formula for a really small amount of money. Here again, with the LS1, 350 horsepower and a 3,200 pound car is gonna be a hot damn riot. A relatively unstressed riot at that. I mean, come on, these things literally get 28 MPG on the highway. It's an old school push rod, simple timing chain and single cam engine that has stood the test of friggin' time and will continue to hold its title of probably the most reliable sports car of all time because of this push rod engine that's still used to this day in the brand new mid-engine C8 Corvette and you just can't Beat it. And lastly, probably one of the most famous reliable sports cars of the modern era, soon to be an absolute unobtainable classic because there is nothing like it on the road today with a 2,800 pound curb weight, 240 horsepower from a nine 
1,000 RPM four-cylinder engine from a company that is literally world-renowned for its ability to make engines of all sizes that last to the moon and friggin' back and then back to the moon and across the solar system and back again, crossing over a million miles with zero issues, even though it was in three floods and you haven't changed the oil in two years and you don't check the oil level until the oil pressure light comes on. I'm of course talking about the Honda S2000. The Honda S2000 really does this just about perfectly. They gave it just enough horsepower to make it extra fun, but without sacrificing what still makes it a Honda from a reliability standpoint. It's just like the NSX in a sense. The power isn't crazy, but it's gonna have just enough to get you close to the other quick cars that it competes with, but it's gonna focus on being able to do it over and over and over again with zero issues and zero regrets, which is something we really take for granted these days. These things were literally built to last forever, getting the daily bully freaking beat down. The S2000 is the kind of car you can almost blindly take to any track day, beat up on some Miatas, keep up with some cars much more expensive than itself, and then just drive it home probably on the same tank of gas and do it again tomorrow without breaking the bank. Now I'm sure there's a ton of other cars that I missed that you guys are just pulling your hair out waiting for me to bring up so please let me know in the comments what those are. I'd love to learn what other cars are out there that are both fun and reliable. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the crazy stuff going on over here and don't forget to get entered in the giveaway guys. We got a whole set of freaking Kanze wheels with your name on them but you cannot win if you do not enter. I'm Sean from Fitment Industries, SeanB.fi on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. Peace. Okay. That's my outro. I, I can't help it.